What's up, YouTube? What you know? My name is Domino with Zero, and welcome to a Pokemon Sun and Moon anime review of episode number 80. When we left off last time, which was two weeks ago, we did not have an episode last week, the group was visiting the Hokulani Observatory where we met Molane for the very first time, and the group was going to be observing a Minior Shower. Not a Meteor Shower, but a Minior Shower. Ash and Kiawe transported a Minior who was still in its shell back to the lab. After it hatched, it became friends with po uh, Poipole. Very close friends, in fact. Um, we learned that when Minior loses its shell, they fade out of existence, uh, and which caused a pretty emotional scene between Ash, Pikachu, and Poipole. And at the end, we very randomly saw a Rayquaza as the Minior all faded back into space. Now in today's episode, it took a little while to get going. It was kind of a po seemingly pointless episode at the beginning. Uh, but the last like minute wound up being, or last minute or two wound up being pretty big. If you checked out this episode, let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Let me know if I missed anything or if you have any different thoughts. Now, the episode starts where we see the kids actually leaving from the Hokulani Observatory where they are to be heading back to Mele Mele, where they see a sign. Poi Pol sees a sign, uh, which apparently is going to be a shortcut to the ferry that they need to take to get back to Mele Mele. And as they walk in, everyone's asking Sophocles, like, are you going to be okay in this dark cave? Because as we know, he's a pansy that doesn't like dark. And he's like, yeah, of course I'm going to be fine. Because remember, Molaine is his cousin, so he's been there before, he knows this cave, and it turns out there's a lot of glowing moss inside the cave. It's actually a really cool looking cave, uh, and they explain that, you know, this cave can either lead a shortcut down to the ferry, or it could lead out to Mount Lanakila. And they're like, well, crap, if we get lost, we're going to be in trouble. And of course, the troublemaker himself, Marowak, picks up with his bone. He picks up this glowing moss and starts swinging around at everybody because it looks like his, his bone is on fire. So, of course, he thinks it's hilarious. He's chasing everyone around. Turtonator steps in the way to try and get him to stop. And Marowak headbutts him, knocks him over, which causes an explosion to happen inside the cave. That's where the episode title runs, and as I said, this episode is called A Sandstorm, an Ice Hole Double Battle. Ice Hole. That reminds me of whose line is it anyway. But anyway, the episode comes back showing that same blast, and all of the group gets separated into different, into different parts of the cave. And they're all deducing that they need to find each other, and of course, ask... Ash and Pikachu get separated. How many times have we seen this? But when Ash is separated from Pikachu, he panics. I don't know why. Again, how many times has this happened, Ash? You should know that everything is going to be just fine. But Ash runs off, not paying attention to anything, and steps on a bulldoor and angers it. The bulldoor almost explodes, but him and Kiawe are able to run away because Rowlet is sleeping in Ash's bag. Isn't going to be any help to him. In another part of the cave, um, Lily, Sophocles, and Mallow have landed and they're trying to figure out what to do. And Lily has this brilliant idea of, you know, licking their finger and then putting it in the air so they can feel the wind. So they know which way the wind's coming from so they can go towards the outside. So they start to head that way and an Alolan Raticate is rushing at them. So they determine that's not the best idea. So they're all sitting down, trying to figure out what they're gonna do. They look kind of sad. Oh my gosh, we're lost. And Mallow's like, in a time like this, she brought cookies with her, some Mallow cookies. And so everyone's eating, the Pokemon are eating them, the other two are eating them. And Mallow has this moment where she shares that she's so excited that people are enjoying her food. And that's what she wants to do. That's her dream of being a cook and providing food for people. And so they go around talking about their dreams, and Sophocles wants to be an astronaut, um, just wanting to see the secrets of space, which we got to see that from him in the last episode. And of course, Luli, Lily is clueless. Lily is, Lily is clueless as to what she wants to do. What a surprise. So the, that group, while they're sitting there, they hear something off to the side and they run off to it and it's an Alolan Sandshrew, a group of Alolan Sandshrew that look like they're training. It looks like they're fighting against each other, but there's one big one who's fighting off all of the others and it looks like they're training for something. And as they see all of the kids, they all surround the kids and Mallow's like, here, don't fight us. Like, we're friends. Take this cookie. Sandshrew snatches the cookie and eats it. They all start to bond with each other. Back where Ash and Kiawe are, they find an exit to the cave. 
Turns out this is the one that was going towards Mount Lanakila. They were completely lost and completely cold, but they ran back in. Back at the main area with Malo, Sophocles, and Lily, they're, they're all sitting around with the sand shrew talking and watching the bigger sand shrew, the biggest sand shrew, training with the others. He walks up, gets petted by Lily, and then they all run off towards something. And as the group of kids comes up to them, they see this castle of ice that just opens up out of nowhere. And on it, in it, you can see on the little stone, the little ice pillars, you can see scratch marks. And it looks like this is where Sand Shrew lives, but why aren't they there? Then out of nowhere, a Tyranitar comes. Apparently it's this Tyranitar had come from a hole in the ice and was just like taking over this area. He was knocking everyone out. He threw up a sandstorm attack and then he starts hitting them all with stone edge, just absolutely going at them. During one of the Stone Edge attacks, Lily winds up getting trapped behind stones. Vulpix had gotten blown towards the fight because of the sandstorm Lily chased after Snowball, and they wound up getting trapped behind a group of stones. So they're trying to figure out, how are we going to get out? How are we going to get out? And Lily looks over at the, the Sand Shrew, who are all very hurt. Most of them are very hurt from these Stone Edges that they're getting hit by. And so Lily's like, you know what? We're going to help. And Lily runs up, uses a hail attack, which energizes some of the sand shrew and they start fighting again and Lily asks the biggest Alolan, uh, Alolan sand shrew if he will help them and do a double battle. So it's Alolan Vulpix, Alolan sand shrew versus Tyranitar. And they're fighting back and forth, back and forth, and they wind up winning with a combination of Aurora Veil to protect them. They use a bit of a powdered snow, a little bit of a blizzard, and ends it with a metal claw. Alolan sand shrew swipes at him, takes him out. Tyranitar lands on his back, he starts to get up, but Sandshrew yells at him, scares him off, I guess. A Tyranitar getting scared by an Alolan Sandshrew is a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a stretch. I guess we'll go with that. It was a little bit of a stretch, but the Tyranitar runs away and Lily seals up the little hole uh, with a powder snow. Now, Ash and Kiawe during that time make it to another exit where they run into Lana and Rotom and all of the other Pokemon so they have their little, you know, reunion moment. Uh, but back in the cave, um, all of the Sandshrew are celebrating. They go back to digging in there, digging through the ice and charge a bug. Uh, Sophocles' charge of bug winds up finding an ice stone and hands it to Sophocles and Sophocles determines that this is an ice stone mine and while he's holding it the biggest sand shrew that had won the battle against the Tyranitar comes up and touches it evolving into a lowland sand slash actually pretty cool came out of nowhere and Lily asks the Sand Slash, will you protect this area now, now that you've evolved, now that you're stronger, to which Sand Slash responds by running back behind some ice and comes back with an Icium Z to give Lily. That came out of nowhere. Like I said, the beginning of this episode, it was kind of like, it's kind of slow. I, I didn't really know what they were going to do with it, but... Lily gets this ICM Z, which is really cool. She's like, you know, I, I don't have a Z ring, so what am I going to do? And Mallow and Sophocles are like, no, take it. Like, you might wind up coming across a Z ring in the near future. I have no idea how that's going to happen, when that's going to happen, but looks pretty cool. Eventually, they wind up emerging and meeting up with everybody else. And after recapping their adventure, turns out Chargebug has another ice stone that he found. And Sophocles gives it to Lily because Lily has a lowland Vulpix. And Lily asks, uh, you know, because all, all of the kids, all of the others are like, are you going to evolve Snowball? Are you going to evolve Snowball? And Lily's like, well, it's not up to me. Leans down and asks Snowball if, she, if she's ready to evolve. Snowball is very hesitant, like to the point where she hides behind Steeny. So they decide not to do it now. And all the other Pokemon... Kind of, pump Vul kind of pump Vulpix up, you know, it's okay, it's, you don't want to evolve now. You'll get stronger, you'll want to do it eventually. And the group heads back to the ferry, and it didn't look like they made any progress. It looked like they walked out the same entrance that they came in. I guess they got so lost that it wound up not being a shortcut at all. But that was the entire episode. Pretty cool stuff. Again, Lily getting that Icium Z as well as the Ice Stone. This Ninetales is going to wind up being really awesome. I'm very excited to see how Lily progresses more in the future. Because, again, this is nothing like the, the game, which I think is awesome. I guess usually it's not like anything like the game. But 
you never want to see characters like Lily get treated like they did in the game. Um, Cause I know there's been some characters in the past that have been like that. Now, Next week looks like it could be a pretty intense episode. We see the return of the Mask Royale. That's Kukui in his mask. We see his Incineroar, the overpowered Incineroar. We see it, uh, the, the people that they're fighting against have a Mag Mortar and an Electivire. And it turns out that the Mask Royale needs help and gets Ash's help. So Ash has his mask on and they're double battling Incineroar and Toracat versus Electivire and Mag Mortar. I saw some speculation that maybe this is where Ash's Toracat evolves. I'm pretty sure he learned a new move that it showed in the preview, but we'll have to save that for the next week. That's all that we have for this review. Again, if you checked out this episode with Lily at the center with these Alolan Sand Shoes, Alolan Sand Slash, and a random Tyranitar that was in an ice cave, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. We'll see you next time. Until then, spread some positivity, be the light, and have a blessed day.